In this video, I'm gonna bring you another interview with one of my students. He basically made over $700,000 in sales and he had a very bumpy ride. It was not as smooth as the other guys and it was basically ups and downs and ups and downs and he had a lot of problems which he had to face and which he actually overcame. So this is gonna be a very interesting interview, especially because of that reason, because this is not gonna be a success story which just went super smooth and everything worked perfect. We're gonna also show kind of the dark sides of dropshipping and the problems which dropshipping brings with it and how to also overcome those problems because you have to understand that every single problem ever is gonna be solvable in dropshipping. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. I'm happy to have you here. Basically, uh, this video is gonna be with Matic, one of my students. Um, we've been working for almost like a year already or so. Um, and yeah, you can kind of tell your experience, what happened to you over, over the last year, what's, well, where you came from, what happened to you, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so basically I'm an architect by profession and I was um, getting into dropshipping, like learning it on my own. Um, had little success, but knew basically what, what I want to do. Um, I bought a course and things like that. But as I started basically working with you um, as a mentor, I think that was just when the corona started last year in April, I think. Mm -hmm. um, that's when you basically guided through the, those little things, filled in the little gaps where I couldn't figure it on my own. Um, so from that point, it was easier for me to start growing within the industry. After mm -hmm. the first winner, I thought it's going to be easier than it actually was. And the profits weren't that high. Um, but over time, um, you get more experience and better feeling for what products are going to work, what kind of creatives work and things like that. So from mm -hmm. that point, it just went up since the past year. Okay. Okay. And uh, before you, we actually started working together, did you already test a couple of products or what, what was the case then? Yeah, I actually started already in 2018, end of 2018, and then uh, focused on architecture a little bit in between uh, opening mm -hmm. a company. And then when I went back to, to dropshipping, I, I tested a bunch of products, yeah, but um, nothing really worked mm -hmm. as it should. Um, until that point when then the, that product um, for the piano stuff started to work. Um, yeah, yeah. And do you remember how many products we tested um, to get to the first initial winner? Um, not sure, maybe about 10, Yeah, five to 10, something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. And so then after that, what happened? Like basically you, you had that one winner, it kind of took off, but it didn't go super crazy. Um, yeah. What happened then? Um, since then, I had a couple of winners, and every time it it went better. Um, in between, I also tried doing um, e-commerce and the local market, um, mm -hmm. but with tax and with the delivery and uh, customs and everything, just was too complicated. So I focused completely on drop shipping. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, after that. Um, had another product in summer or actually two products that were decent as well mm -hmm. um, and then by end of the year then that was one product that did really good within one or two months mm -hmm. um, made some really good profits out of that and then was able to focus even hire someone um, and from that point started to test more and more and more um, nice okay Mm -hmm. And on like in total, how much revenue did you do? How was the profit? I think that since then in total was about 700,000 revenue, something That's like that. Mm -hmm. um, profit margins were different all the way down from 5% up to 30. So yeah. hard to say. Um, when you have a real winner, it's about 20, 25 if it, mm -hmm. if it has a good upsell mm -hmm. potential. Um, yeah, otherwise around 15 to 20, I would say. Yeah, yeah. And what would you say was kind of the biggest game changer for you? When we started working together, what was the difference? And what, were, what were the biggest things you kind of learned? Um, your approach on how to do the product research was different. Um, and basically everything that I got from the videos online um, 
at that point was very more like fluff content nothing really that yeah. you could take advantage of um mm -hmm. so even if i was trying and trying putting it together didn't really work out when you were able to will or actually willing to check directly in the ad account and tell me this try this and try this and try that mm -hmm. um and it just took off the the whole approach was was different i knew the the fundamentals but like that i don't know the the little gem that that you need for for success was was the the gap that you basically filled with um looking directly into what i'm doing so um yeah i hope that answers mm -hmm. the question yeah for sure for sure so yeah product research um would you still say that that's kind of the the main thing a like normal beginners are lacking or would you say your like position was different to, to people who are just starting out uh sorry can, can you repeat that please so it, let's say you talk to a beginner um to a beginner like in dropshipping who doesn't have a lot of experience um do you think my, most people have that problem with product research and that's kind of the main sticking point or would you say that was like the special case for you uh i think that most people do product research the wrong way yeah. um mm -hmm. when they try to learn um like that just because a lot of beginners don't understand how the sales stuff is going to go they always think that their opinion is important that yeah like things like that so i think that the product research is the the most important part after that it's more or less um just following the steps when yeah. research you need to get the understanding and feeling how mm -hmm. how to get, like how to sell yeah for sure for sure and also like one huge misconception i'm seeing constantly on youtube and everywhere is basically that the main thing the most important thing is that you have a problem solving product and for you for example um i'm pretty sure a lot of the products were not problem solving is that correct um yeah actually the one that i was doing in q4 wasn't problem solving yeah it was just a fun kind of product um mm -hmm. and was going like crazy i mean it was q4 and was kind of a family renew type of product but mm -hmm. um yeah it's it's definitely not a must to have a problem solver yeah and i think the last one as well right <laughs> let me yeah. just find the uh, you want me to share the screen or yeah sure um you can also share share your screen here okay yeah um so here we can see that's what time frame one month uh yeah that's one month nice. so basically okay. there was some more revenue in may even in june i think but yeah this was the mm -hmm. best month for this product got it and that was the one which is not the problem solving yeah exactly from april this okay. year like a few months ago mm -hmm um was also kind of a toy product toy um, product yeah um so yeah this was not the um this product was not the problem solver it was basically a toy product that was um kind of popular and i was able to get a piece of the the pie um yeah i think yeah but otherwise this product was quite really saturated yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. by now okay. i think yeah okay can you just for for proof refresh the screen so people don't think it's like huge fake numbers yeah. um and also what was the profit margin on this one uh i think it was 25 percent oh, if okay. i'm not mistaken because a lot of people were buying um the upsell I, or like mm -hmm. taking the multiple yeah yeah. And why do you think um, that this product do well in comparison to other products you tested which did? Um, here in particular, actually, I changed the strategy a little bit because even mm -hmm. though I was working with you for a while, um, we were trying to just test, 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 test and not focus that much on the quality of the creatives or paying mm -hmm. attention even to like we just tested everything that you said maybe mm -hmm. could work um but then when i saw 10 products just losing money um i went back to the research and checked like which of these products is, is the most recent one um mm -hmm. which one has good creatives good user generated content and things, things like that um 
and then really focused on uh, spending more time creating the, uh, the product page and um, ads, like more ads, and then choosing out of those the three best ones that we tested. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was the, the kind of a shift that, that helped at that time. Mm -hmm. So the main thing was the creatives. Uh, yes, and recency of the product. Okay, so basically that, that it was super trending at the moment. Yeah. Got it, got it, okay. Okay, um, and what was like? What was it like for you to to actually find the first winner you had? So um, did it like did it change your perspective on things, or what what happened there? Uh, it it yeah, I kind of got proof that this thing works. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you you start seeing real numbers, and you're testing new ad sets, and things actually add up to be profitable and then super profitable then uh that's a really crazy feeling because you you see how unlimitedly you can scale but it is true that once like you don't have a winner for a while that belief shift also goes down so it's a kind of uh in this business i think that you grow mentally as well because you have to go through these tough times and always keep your head up and try to keep the upward spiral of your belief shift and that thing to not turn up, uh, turn down so yeah yeah maybe 100 that was a bit right. too long but yeah no no i get it again so for you like the whole process was a little bit rougher um and for example the last interview i just did uh, probably it's going to be posted on the youtube channel before yours that's um felix where like right now last month he made like 100k profit uh, which is just crazy and basically, nice. um, for him, it was in a smoother ride when we started. So the first product went really well, immediately uh, did, a, did great. And he actually um, did everything he could to, to keep going and not get comfortable with it. And it worked. But I see a lot of people where that happens, where the very first product works, they get super comfortable and they don't make it in the long run. And um, for you, for example, it was a little bit rougher because we tested a couple of products which didn't work. Then finally you had the winner. Then that winner also didn't work for super long. And we had to find new winners. And it was a little, the whole process was just rougher. And from my experience, those kind of people, if you actually like can make it still, it's going to be more valuable in the long term because it's basically going to like the learning curve is even though it's longer, it's going to be much, much better like on the, on the long run. And you're going to learn, like, you know, how to kind of get against diversity. You know, you, you understand what's, what to do to solve really big problems and how to overcome them. And that's kind of the, the, the big learning from people where, where it's not super easy always. And you're also not the hardest. Like we have other people which had like super, super tough problems, which are very hard to solve because they live in like third world countries and they don't have payment providers and like things which are very, very hard to solve if you're, if you, if you're in other positions. And there's always like a degree to, 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 to easy and hard and dropship. But um, the, the main problem in the beginning is, as you said, you need some kind of proven concept that dropshipping works. And if you don't see anything, if you don't see any results in the very beginning, it's very easy to to just um so so it's either you have a very long process and then people a lot of people like a lot of people just quit because they see ah it's not working it's probably because of drop shipping then they try amazon fba or crypto or whatever um okay. instead of just understanding that they do mistakes or there are outside factors which they don't didn't like calculate which they have to put into the the equation yeah yeah, yeah. The, the next question is basically, what would you say currently is your biggest obstacle? Um, right now, you already almost made seven figures. What do you think? What's in between you and actually making that? What are still the biggest uh, issues you're currently facing? Um, it's hard to say, but I think that what you said before, getting comfortable once you something is working for you, mm -hmm. um, I talked with a few of other students that were working with you that have working products and like they have the same kind of thing. You, yeah. um, you don't like focus on testing new stuff and building new stores mm -hmm. and things like that. But um, recently I did 
try to focus um, a lot on that, to have multiple stores and testing multiple things at the same time and really mm -hmm. um, focusing on which products I want to test that have the biggest really potential. So um, at the moment, things are quite good. So I wouldn't say I have any problems. Maybe you could ask me a month ago or something like that. Uh, roughly at that time, like the, the whole belief shift is com is a bit different, but um, yeah, I think maybe consistency uh, with testing and mm -hmm. just keep pushing forward and not getting comfortable, but to try and keep growing like this at the same pace as when you really desperately need the next winner. If you do that same pace, yeah. even when you have winners, then seven figures is easy to get to quite fast. Yeah. But so, yeah, that's the it's very important to stay kind of mentally broke. It's very important to, to <laughs> understand that you don't have a lot of money. If you like, and even if you do have a lot of money, you have to kind of show yourself that you're still broke. And for me, for example, it's really important for me to have separate bank accounts where I only see the one where the lowest number is on. And I have other reserves like bank account, which I don't even look at because I don't want to start, like, I don't want to get comfortable at all. And it's really, really easy to get comfortable. As you said, like we have a lot of people who are doing great. They're doing like between five and 15K profit per month. And in reality, you don't need more, like you're good. Um, with, with like 10K profit, 20K profit, what else do you need, you know? Yeah, However, yeah, exactly. if you think like that, it's not going to stay those 20, uh, 10 to 20K. And even if it does stay like that, you're still not going to get to that next level. And for example, like, like you, you're not going to reach 50K or 100K profit if you think like that. And it's, it's, it's really, really important to kind of mentally stay broke or at least behave like you are. Um, because for me personally, I've always been working the hardest and the best when everything was shit. Like when everything was really, really <laughs> bad, I'm a machine in working. When everything is great, I try to get into the mindset of, okay, this is still like, it's, I'm still, still not there. And that's, it's very, 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 like that's one of the biggest challenges after you have that first winner. Yeah, exactly. If you want to get to that next level, yeah. But yeah, as you said, like 10K a month is, is decent and much more than anyone could, could ever, uh, even think of. So. Yeah, you need to basically decide where you want to be. Do you want to go to that 100K or 50K a month? Um, or you want to stay to this at this comfortable level and just... Yeah, but the main problem is if you, if you do decide that you want to stay at 10K per month, then the exact problem is going to hit like you, you, you were describing. Like, you're, like if you want to stay at 10K, you're not going to stay at 10K. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you always need to, to want more and then you're going to yeah. get close yeah, to that yeah exactly. exactly exactly and it's 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 a big big thing um i would say i, I would probably say that the, that's the biggest thing on level two kind of the first thing is to find the first winners and then that's the second like overcoming that to understand that keep pushing no matter what um yeah, yeah but what would you say are from the whole dropshipping experience what are the key learnings you had here key learnings um probably mm, the whole sales mentality um i was looking at things like when i started out more um from the perspective of just doing things by um by the rules but then i started thinking and focusing more on why the clients would like potential clients would want to buy and focusing more on actually giving value and giving something to someone that's gonna be happy that they paid for that mm -hmm. um it helped me grow mentally because of all these hard times um like when it showed me how what everything that i'm capable of like when you're really good low on money you will spend all the time focusing and you can't think of other things and then you make it work like no matter yeah. what so yeah. those kind of things it it not only helped me grow business wise but um like personally which was basically mm -hmm. the goal from the beginning i think that once you start actually making more money and seeing and figuring like solving problems and things like that people kind of think is capitalistic kind of 
world but i think that people that make more money also had to grow as a person much 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 more but a lot of people have a mentality that money is bad and that if you're making a lot of money you're like not kind of a good person or a positive person or things like that so yeah, yeah I'm, for I'm sure on a rant a little bit but yeah no yeah 100 like in my opinion even though it's very very controversial to say that normally on average people who are like wealthy or rich are better people if they didn't weren't like born into it if they actually wait, i'm getting a call um if they're actually um really achieved the 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 money and it's not just been been given to them usually the process of actually getting there makes them bigger like bigger and better people just because it's very very hard to do that if you don't know what you're doing if you start from from zero you have to take certain steps to to get there and it's not only about money because for example i look up to people like the best people in every industry it's i don't care if it's the best basketball or guitar player or if it's the best person on like on business because it's just a person who knows how to get shit done you know and that's what it what it ends up getting to like it's important to understand what is what it takes to be the best in one specific thing and it does not matter which area it is and i would like to everybody watching here i would also advise to you looking at the the things which everybody has in common who is on the top it doesn't matter like the, the top 1% of the people in every single industry normally have pretty similar traits and you have to look at that instead of just following like specific like specific things in your niche only yeah yeah exactly um but for you what would you say are the goals now you said you don't want to go crazy to like 50 or 100k how i heard it you 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 do want to stay well, like 10 20 um how do you how do you envision let's say the next 6 to 12 months uh no i, I just said that the people have to decide what they want to do but okay. um I do want to to grow more. Like the main goal is to 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 get the consistency somehow, um, either to test more products or to find to be able to find them um, better to to get more skilled with having um, better percentage of success with the products. So basically, mm -hmm. the main goal would be to have winners month by month and not have any months that I'm like in the negative. So that's the main, mm -hmm. the main goal at the moment. Um, but otherwise, from that point on, moving forward to um, more higher ticket products, mm -hmm. uh, between 50 and 100 probably. Yeah. Um, and then after I'm going to, like after half a year, one year, I want to go into branding in a specific niche that, uh, that I always wanted. Mm -hmm. but want want to save more enough money for that and build some sort of a team so i can actually when i want to do it i can execute it as a, as i know not start it too early because it's not necessary mm -hmm. um so yeah okay nice nice um and currently right now how much profit are you making like on average per day um at the moment i think between 500 and 1000 but nice. this product just took off a week ago i think mm -hmm. okay okay and um what would you say does your average day look like what do you do the whole day how much do you focus on drop shipping like how do you structure the day um ideally like i have a plan how i want to structure it but i'm not quite there yet um the ideal thing that i'm striving to at the moment and getting closer to is um basically waking up do some sort of morning routine and then start work um that that's about two hours and then start work around nine mm -hmm. um and like i have one employee now in the office so i uh, have a meeting in the morning with him do the daily tasks and the day before like or during the day then have lunch and just um focus on these tasks and thinking about how to grow more and uh, do research and maybe watch a video or two about um new stuff from the courses mm -hmm. um and then end of the day make the plan for the next day in the workflow task manager for each one of us mm -hmm. uh, and that's it and after in the evening do some sports go around hang out with my girlfriend things like that 
Okay, okay. So you do basically work the whole day? Yeah, about okay. eight or nine hours, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice, yeah. Yeah, and it's also a huge like misconception um, that people have that they think, okay, you're gonna make like 10, 20K a month, everything is gonna be great, you're gonna work like two to three hours per day, you're good. Um, well, it's very hard to do that. It's very, very hard to stay on a consistently, like on a consistently good level, if you just uh, if you if you just work a couple of hours per day, unless you have a big team and everybody is doing everything for you. If you constantly have yeah. a lot of people who are doing things for you, then yes, but you have to get to that point. For example, you said okay, you only have one employee yet. Like right now, um, it's it's just not realistic to to work a couple of hours per day if you want to stay at that level or want to make more. Mm, yeah, exactly. The it's kind of you work 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 and then the, the results are not showing immediately but they show yeah. with kind of a delay so you can reap the the results of that work but mm -hmm. if you stop the work the results are gonna are gonna come later and for example the past three to five days i was moving the office and doing a lot of stuff because we're going into a new like more to the center of the city mm -hmm. but anyway i was 12 hours a day working there and only spend one hour for ads. So mm -hmm. the guy that's working for me did other stuff that, that was necessary to do, but I, I could pull it off with one hour a day. But if I do yeah. that consistently for the next two month, I'm going to reap the profit of this product, but then it's going to stop. So exactly. that's a, that's you need exactly to work all day, yeah. every day if you want, but otherwise, as you said, you need a huge team and you really need to have them uh, trained good and have other people that are going to be managing and things like that so yeah 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 for sure and that's exactly like that, that's that's a really good point you you don't work for the money you make today like the money you make today is passive that's true you, you can make it with a couple of hours per day no problem but the consistency comes through working for the future and um, it's really important to do that for sure also for example what i've seen people also do like really wrong is they kind of look at the results on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, on a weekly basis. And that's also wrong because you have to look at your growth on a, like a three to six month basis. If you look, okay, in the last three months, what, I, what did I do? What did I do better or worse than the three months before that? Then you clearly see a pattern that everything is going either better or worse. But if you look on a weekly basis, it's almost impossible to tell because this week you could be chilling, doing two hours per day, one, one hour per day or whatever, and have a great week and then next week is going to go down but you don't feel that because it, you you don't connect that in your head you don't you think ah oh, this week i did something wrong wrong in reality it was last week so it's really important to kind of look at the bigger picture here and try to understand why things are going better or in the worst direction on a bigger scale and it's really important to do that yeah i had a problem with that uh exactly and i was just thinking the recently basically that in this business, you really need to look at really big um, time slots, even yeah. yearly time slots, because yeah. one week from the other can be, in terms of profits and other stuff, so much different and in terms of work and the problems that you're experiencing, or even one month to the next one can be like day to night difference, mm -hmm. when on a yearly basis or a six month basis, you can actually more clearly see what's going on. Yes, yes, for sure. So the, the broader you kind of look at everything, the better it is. And here it's obviously important to understand what you're doing today to actually get that, to get that. And for example, if you're doing today something which is not gonna change anything for the, for the next, like in, let's say in six months, you're not gonna see any impact in anything, then probably you shouldn't do it. If it's like a little bookkeeping thing, then that's gonna be the thing you can do in your free time instead of in the work time. And it's really important to look at, okay, what is going to be kind of the, the biggest thing I can do today, this week, this month to achieve long-term successes. And the problem is that a lot of people are like kind of running after today. They're running after, okay, right now, today, everything, like uh, I have to do this task, this task, this ta task, when, it, when in reality, it's not that important and it's not a priority at all. And for example, one, I had one student, his name is James. Um, he's doing great, doing really good numbers, but he had super, super wrong goals. And his goal, for example, was to reach 10K revenue per day. 
And that was kind of the main thing when we, when we took a look at everything he's doing, that was the main thing that stopped him from making good profits. Because what he was doing was he had a product which is doing like three to five K per day. It's doing great. He's doing great profits. And then he tried to scale. He tries to scale no matter what. The, the main goal he has in his head, okay, I mean, it's 5K. Now I need to double my budget to 10K and that's it. And in reality, that ate up all his profits. And his profit margin suffered so much because he just wanted to get to the 10K. And then I, I looked at everything and told him, okay, it doesn't make any sense what you're doing. You're leaving unprofitable things on. You want to be break even on 10K when in reality, it would be super profitable on 5K. And um, that it's, it was just super wrong. And because he was looking at a daily revenue basis, which both is wrong, you should look at a monthly profit basis. Um, that was just like a complete, like a very, very big mistake, which cost him a lot of money. And then we like just changed that approach and it immediately started to work because all of a sudden he didn't have this urge to try to scale from 3K, for example. He, he was sitting at 3K comfortably, didn't need it to, to, to constantly increase everything at all costs. You know, and he was good um, on a lower budget and it was going great. And then slowly we started to scale, which was the right approach because you can do a lot of mistakes when you scale. And you also saw the same thing. Like when you, when you for example, scale too, too fast, too much, um, everything crashed. I think you, you told me that as well, right? And that's like a, a big thing which can happen if you only have one winner. And I would not recommend trying that if you only have one good product on. So if you have a bunch of really good products, then go for it. Then one winner is fine. You can kind of lose out on it and you can make a little bit less profit and scale and then go down if it doesn't work. And if it does work, then the reward is higher than the rest. However, if you only have one product, the risk is way higher than the reward. So you, you're kind of risking 500 to 1K profit per day to make 2K profit per day. Um, but the risk is the, 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 the risk is like you're losing everything and that's too much. You know, you cannot go like go double or nothing and drop shipping. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but for you, you said um, the, the kind of the, the key learnings you had was this, okay, the, the overcoming, like overcoming adversities, overcoming the problems. Um, what specifically would you say were the things which you did to, to kind of, what, what was the biggest problem you had and how did you overcome that? um well it's hard to say like what the problem is i i think the biggest problem was that i was afraid of failing so mm -hmm. i was making decision based on that fear um and was doubting in myself doubting in how what i did and just turning on those ads i didn't turn them on with confidence but with fear that i'm gonna lose the money that i'm putting in mm -hmm. so that brought the same kind of results as well um, yeah. and like once i started working with you i had kind of a feeling that if i don't know what you're I'm doing at least you know what you're doing and you're going to check it and you're going to be mm -hmm. able to tell me before I make the mistake how to approach it I know that it's not a guarantee but at least it's as close as I can get yeah. so from as soon as that shifted um, things started working a bit much better but I did still had those kind of fluctuations where I have a belief and really strong confidence and then mm -hmm. when I don't have a winner for a month I feel like I mean, it goes up and down, but it goes like this still, if you put uh, an yeah. average, it's still growing, but mm -hmm. those up, ups and downs are quite turbulent. Yes, yes. And that's also a huge thing, um, kind of to, to actually play to win instead of playing to not lose. Um, and like you, it, it's in every, again, in every um, like situation in life, you have to really play to win instead of not losing. For example, if you're gonna, like if you want a new, client and you're going to text 10 people and then zero of those 10 people are going to respond or if you cold call as a salesperson you cold call cold call let's say 50 people and all of them say no 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 your motivation is going to die down you're going to not feel like like you're worth anything because everybody said no and then you're going to not want to do those cold calls anymore however if you think okay 
if that like those 50 cold calls mattered zero, they don't matter at all, then the approach is going to be okay. I'm just there to get that one, which is actually going to make me the money, like and the, the time war. And if you don't think like that, then it's very easy to just stop doing cold calls and you're going to be super afraid of doing them because you're playing to not lose. If you don't, if you play to not lose, you're going to not do any cold calls or do a very, very like little, little amount a day. So yeah, um, the same thing goes to products. The same sort of thing goes to like, okay, if I'm not going to, like, if I'm going to, for example, I also had this, I actually had this with, with my ratio of winning products. I was very proud that I tested not that many products, but had a lot, like a lot of success. I didn't test a lot of, like a huge amount of product in the beginning, but I still saw like after I started to do the right things that I had winner after winner after winner. And then I mentally thought I, I don't want to mess up that ratio. I want to keep that good ratio. And that was, that was, was that, that was the thing which actually stopped me to, to like from testing a lot. And that was a big mistake because the ratio matters nothing. The only thing that matters is how many winning products you have. It doesn't matter if you test 50 or 10 products or five products. So yeah, um, for me, like I remember when I, I think it was three in a row of winners immediately when I started out doing well. And that was like, I, I wanted to keep that streak and it's, uh, it was, it was a huge mistake. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for you, what would you say were your biggest mistakes so far? Um, what did you do wrong? And what would you do differently if you would do everything from scratch now? Um, yeah, kind of hard question. I would probably get into mentorship at an earlier stage. Um, and also I wouldn't stop at the start of 2019, but I would find a mentor like a month after I basically got to know dropshipping mm -hmm. and just focus and go all in there. And then because, yeah, I think my answer is just, uh, I would start earlier than I did, like way, way earlier. Yeah. As soon as I found yeah. out, because at, before I could capital, capitalize on it more, I could get more knowledge and much more experience. And today I could already be where I want to be within six months or a year. Yes, for sure, for sure. And that's also huge. Like. So many people, um, when I talk to them, um, my ratio of people who actually get started working with me um, to, to the people who don't is around 80%. So 80% of the people who I actually have a call with, they do get started and 20 don't. And from those 20, um, mostly they think, okay, I just started out. I want to I wanna try things by myself. And then in a couple of months, I want to I wanna just do it then. And that's just stupid it's not the right thing to do because in those three months whatever you do you're either gonna lose more money or lose more time it's one out of two you're not gonna save time and money by doing it by yourself and that's the only two things which are important the only two things are how much money do you make or lose and how much time do you spend or or not spend so um yeah like it's it's crucial to if you don't know what you're doing to have a person who does know what they're doing and also it's very easy to, to quit um, if you do it by yourself or if you, can, if you have, don't have that proven concept because you can kind of borrow the proven concept from me. You can, like, I can literally show you a screen share of stores which work. I can like, do, show you whatever you want to see that right now dropshipping works. If you want to see that, if that's your concern, if you are not sure in dropshipping. And that will kind of eliminate the fear of okay, dropshipping as a whole doesn't work. Because if you do it just by yourself, you're always going to have that constant fear of, okay, is this even real? Are those guys on YouTube doing like actually telling you the truth or is this all bullshit? And um, you, you can eliminate that fear by seeing, okay, hundred percent, this works for sure. And also then you don't have to have the confidence in yourself. Like you said, you, you didn't have the confidence in yourself that you were doing the right things. You just understood that you're going to do the right things. And you had the confidence that the steps are going to be right. If you have a person who's going to look through them. So yeah, yeah, on that note, if you want to get into the mentoring program, sign up for that link below. Um, we're going to have a free consultation session. You're going to have it with me personally, not with any of my coaches or so it's actually going to be me. So yeah, you're going to get to ask me all the questions you want, uh, like about the program, about mentor, like dropshipping in general. And then we see if we're actually a good fit and we're going to get started to, to work together long-term. But anyways, um, for you, 
what the experience, like you said, you tested like five to 10 products in total, or was it with, with me until you found the winner? Um, before I was testing that many, yeah, maybe even 10 to 15, yeah. but mm -hmm. when we started working together, the first one kind of got profitable. Um, okay. Yeah. But so it wasn't yeah. like huge, uh, revenue, but it was enough mm -hmm. to, to make me some money to be able to, um, get some budget for testing, um, and also gave me the confidence that I mentioned before that you can actually do it. And you, because before when you test, 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 you really start doubting that you can actually succeed with, with this business model. When, when yeah. you start seeing those numbers from that point on, from that first winner that we had, um, I knew that I won't stop ever. Yeah. Even if I have a hundred uh, products that just lost me the money i'm gonna mm -hmm. find a way to make more money and then test more until i get there because that that made the the mind shift the first winner yes yes and that's you that that's like a thing which i'm always talking about and it's like what you saw as well you need to see results as soon as possible to do to keep doing it because also a lot of things like a lot of the times when when i see the people who actually didn't start with me i, I talk to them in like two months again and see what happened to them so many people quit just the, the ratio of people who quit doing drop shipping in the very beginning when they do it by themselves is so high and you think okay i'm just gonna do it by myself i'm gonna like not commit 100 percent because i'm not gonna invest money into a mentoring program so i'm just gonna like invest like 100 200 dollars in ads you don't see the results and you're done but if you see that in the first, even if you would see in the first $200 that you made 400, let's say that, which is not realistic, but let's say you, you spent your first $200 and you're gonna make 400. You're gonna be hooked on dropshipping as a whole. You're gonna be very, very into it immediately. That's gonna make that mindset shift, mindset shift. And for me, I was also, I would say I was lucky in the beginning that I didn't have loser after loser after loser. Um, as I said, like I had three winners in a row. However, it took me a while to find the first one. And it, I don't mean that as in I tested a bunch of products. I mean that as in I tested one product and it took a while to get that product profitable. So the first product I had on like $500 per, per month or something like that. And it took me like 10 months to, to, to get to a good level. But in the beginning... Um, even though I tested a couple of things, I had one baseline product, which actually, that was the one which really took off. So I started with a product and I started with like shout outs and I saw that, okay, I spent $25 on a shout out and I made 50. This is crazy. I spent money on the, like I literally made a sale. I made some money from a, an online store, which is just crazy to think of when you don't know the whole concept. And I, when I saw that in the first, very, very first week, that was enough for me as a proof, that was enough for me to understand that this could work if I know what I'm doing. Because if I don't know what I'm doing and I can make like $5 profit, then that means that if I actually know what I'm doing, it's gonna be really, really good. And yeah, then also on top of that, I knew one guy who actually like he, he did some like ad campaigns for, for dropshippers. And he told me that it's possible to make 100K per month which I, like, I, I didn't believe at that point. And I, I, I literally did not believe that it's, it's something like that is possible. But now I understand that he, like, he was not lying. He, that was actually right. And just, yeah, it, it's, it's crazy to think about it. If you, if you just start out um, to, to try to do it by yourself, it's going to be way harder. Yeah. The perception yeah. Of, of, as you said, making that much a month uh, was like, you you didn't even think about that you were thinking like yeah. when you start out i want to make 10k revenue a month yeah <laughs> but you can do like a million a month you just need to follow the concept and find help to to grow as fast as possible and get to that point yes yes for sure for sure yeah um that's that's huge 100 percent. for you do you have anything like what you also would like to share with anybody who is in the beginning or in the mid stages of dropshipping, what would you tell them? Um, like what should be the number one priority if they're, they're getting started? 
Um, start before you're ready and invest <laughs> into mentorship. Even if you don't have the money, find a way to pay for the first month and then focus on getting that money back to yeah. pay for the rest. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great advice. Especially um, the first thing you said, like uh, if you a lot of people don't feel ready, they don't start. They don't start. And you're, you're never ne gonna you're be ready. ready. Yeah, never. Yeah, you just postpone it, and then it's never gonna happen. Yeah, and then also never gonna happen, through never. having also through having a mentor, that's that also like already by default you have to be ready now because you committed to paying into the like business model. So you right now already have some kind of commitment and then it's much easier to actually like be ready because you're already like into it you know you already started now yeah, so yeah. there's that, that no that way that helped back. me me a lot as well yeah once once you give that money away for the mentorship you feel obligated in a way to to um take action on 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 the things that you do because you feel like you you're paying for this thing and you really want to do it when if you're not committed to it also financially then you can always say okay this week i'm not going to test anything i'm going to focus more on doing this and that but once you go into mentorship it kind of pushes you to every day work and just do the things that um and that brings you so much faster yeah. to to some sort of success for sure Okay, um, so let's wrap it up here. Really appreciate your time. Uh, hopefully, you're gonna get to that million soon. And yeah, then then see you see you soon. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye. Okay.